is Monday, 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 but we're going to make it better, right? Um, I want to talk to y'all today about a story in the book of Samuel. And I know that many of y'all don't uh, listen to Bible studies, but if, if you don't, you really need to listen to this one because it is amazing. Okay, this is one of those amazing stories that everybody heard when they were children. And a lot of us listen to it, and we, you know, kind of whatever, and we just go on. But it is unbelievable. The story is really unbelievable. It's remarkable. And so um, we should give it a little bit more thought than we do. Um, when I went to church yesterday, the preacher actually preached on it, and it was good, really good. And I'm going to expand on some of the things that he said yesterday and um, bring you a little bit extra this morning. Um, I hope you can hear me this morning. I'm out here and the birds are singing. Um, you could hear the morning dove. When I first come out here, I remember when I was young, the morning dove, I thought it was an owl because they make that noise. She's still singing. I don't know if y'all can hear her or not. But they kind of, they sound like they're hooting, you know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then they go, Like that. So they kind of sound like an owl, but it's a morning dove. And they have such a pretty sound, too. It is Monday. Hey, Jan. Hey, Sherry. Um, we are going to be talking about David and Goliath today. And let me just urge you to listen, okay? Even if you don't like hearing Bible stories or the Bible, this is such an uplifting and encouraging uh, study that I think you'll really, really enjoy it, okay? And um, I'm reading out of the book of Samuel, and David comes around in the about the first book of Samuel, and he's the least of his brothers in stature, and he just is the little shepherd boy, pretty much. And the first really cool thing that happened was um, I'm looking for okay is in chapter 16 um, it says the sons of Jesse so the Lord is wanting to take some of the power from the king, and he's, he's actually wanting to anoint, anoint one of Jesse's sons. And he sends someone there to anoint the son of Jesse, okay? And so Jesse, being the dad, you know, says, okay, let's see if I can make this lighten up at all. I probably can't. Um, but anyway, he says, well, he had a bunch of sons, you know. So they start with the oldest, of course. And um, it says, and it came to pass when they were come that he looked into Elab, Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, this is what the Lord said unto Samuel, okay? It says, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For a man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Okay? So he, he lets us know right there that God knows us better than anybody. That God knows us by our heart, not on our countenance, not by our stature, not how we look, but how our heart is. So when Samuel goes to anoint the son of Jesse... The dad, of course, gives him every one of his sons, and Samuel keeps saying, this is not the one. This is not the one. This is not the one lo the Lord wants. So Jesse was really confused, and he was like, well, all I have is a little, my youngest, and he's out with the sheep. And so um, Samuel says, well, go get him. So they go and get David, and he, they bring him in. And, you know, David was very special to the Lord, even from the beginning, because of his heart. 
and he was real close to God. But this is just the beginnings of God and David, okay? So David comes in from the field, and uh, Samuel anoints him with oil and gives him God's blessings. Okay, so now he has his blessings, and you know his brothers are probably like, whatever, you know, why would he pick him instead of me, blah, blah, blah. Now, so he anoints him, and as soon as he anoints him, the king is Saul, and it says, But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And the Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit trouble thee. This is a little later, okay? And it says that he asks for someone who can soothe him. And they go and get David because he can play a harp. Now, what, it, what it's saying here is the king probably had, according to my book, probably had something like dementia because he was getting older. And... Even if, the Bible calls it an evil spirit, and it says the Lord gives him up to an evil, or the Lord, um, let me see how it says. It says the evil spirit was from the Lord. Let me say the, the Lord's not evil at all, but the Lord does, he does um, rule the evil spirits. He does allow them to do things. They can't do anything without his permission just like in the book of Job, okay? So here we have Saul, an evil spirit, and the Lord, and the Lord did allow this to happen. Now, according to my Bible, in the little description part, it says it was more than likely something like dementia, because in the back in this time, if someone would play a harp or pretty music, it would soothe their spirit, and then they would come back, and, and he was getting old, so that, that makes some sense, okay? So David is close to him because he plays the harp, okay? And it works. Now, David is out with his sheep, and there's a big uh, battle going on, okay? And his daddy calls him in. His brothers, he was actually with Saul at the time. Three of his oldest brothers come, and they're like, we got to go fight the Philistines. So Saul was a really big man. He was the king. He was good-looking, tall, huge, you know. And so David leaves them, goes back home to tend the sheep, while his three older brothers go with Saul to fight the Philistines. Well, I guess weeks passed, and his dad was like, look, you need to take the boy some food. So he summons him, tells him to take the bread, um, and the food to his brothers to battle, okay? So, uh, David, um, I'm going to read this to you. There went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath, whose height was six cubits in a span, he had helmet of brass upon his head. He was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Okay? Now, I'm going to read this to you. It says, Goliath was well over nine feet tall. His armor and weaponry would weigh over 150 pounds. Just his armor weighed 150 pounds. David probably didn't weigh much more than 150 pounds. He was a little guy. He was a young guy. It says, um... The staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels. He stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man, and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me and kill me, then I will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then... Ye shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Okay. I know this is a story you've heard a million times, but you need to get the gist of the story here. This is a big guy. Okay. So David uh, runs an errand because his daddy sent him. 
and he took him some corn, bread, and meat, and some cheese. And he was trying to give him some strength for the battle. So he gets out there and being David, he rose up early in the morning, left his sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse commanded him, which is his dad. He came to the trench, and the host was going forth to the fight. Um, David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper at the carriage, and he ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. He hears Goliath's challenge. Okay. As he talked with him, behold, there came up this champion, Goliath. And so David hears him say the same thing I just read earlier, okay? And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him. And they were so afraid, even Saul. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely, to defy Israel? He has come up, and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches, give him his daughter, and make his father's house free. And David spake to the men that stood by him, and David said, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies? of the living God. Now this is where the story gets good. David knows that who God is. And he knows that he's been anointed. And he knows that God is powerful and God can do anything because it's God. Now, so he said, the people answered him and said, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Well, his older brother gets mad. And Elab said, his anger was kindled, and he said, David, why did, come, why did you come here? And with whom has thou left your sheep with, those few sheep that you keep? I know thy pride and naughtiness of the heart, for thou come out here to see in the battle. Okay, so this is his oldest brother. He gets on to him. He not only gets on to him, but he tells him he only gets to, you know, care for a few sheep. Like David wasn't even a good enough man yet because he was so young to take care of a whole flock. Okay. Then he tells him he knows he's naughty and he knows his heart. Now, what did God say about David's heart a few chapters over? He said David was the one that had the only heart that could be anointed. But yet his brother felt that David's heart was naughty. What do you think about that? When you think about siblings, you know, you think about um, how they might feel about you or how they may feel about your heart or how they may feel about your intentions when you get ready to do something and how only God knows your heart. And, it's, and it just makes you think, you know, that God is supernatural and he knows our heart more than anybody. And then you have people who don't think, on spiritual things and they can't even see it you know and, and it, the same thing could happen to one of your brothers or sisters if you love the Lord or you're into the word of Lord of the Lord and they think you're crazy or that you're just a holy roller or you know blah 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 but God knows right so God knows David's heart and even if his brother gets on to him David said what have I now done like give me a break is there not a cause here, he says? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. Now Saul sends for David, and David tells Saul he wants to kill Goliath. And Saul's like, uh, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he's a man of war. David says to Saul, and I don't even know if he's told his brothers this or not. He may or may not have. But we know God's hand was on him because he was anointed by Samuel. And this is what David says. He says, I keep my father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of my flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. 
And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, the lion, y'all, and I smote him and slew him. And the servant slew both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine shall be of one of, as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hands of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Now, what David could see that nobody else could see, nobody, is that there was a cause. And this is what my preacher preached on yesterday. It was really good. He said David could see that it wasn't just a man standing there of a large stature. It was a man defying God. And that he had enough courage to stand for God. Now, this is a big deal, y'all. Because Color Valley Cooks, to me, is very important. But God is more important, okay? My Bible study and my sharing the word of the Lord is more important to me than anything I do. It's more important to me than a TV show that I can get on. If, if the people out in Hollywood see me doing a Bible study and they decide that I'm not for TV, I don't care. You know what I mean? Now, God will make the decision whether or not I go. Not them, anyway. Because God is supernatural. God is amazing. And God can do anything. And we can do anything through God. David knew that. He saw the cause. He saw that there was a cause to fight. And what I want to say to y'all today is there is a cause for us to fight for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is a cause for us to stand up and say, I'm a born-again Christian. Jesus has changed my life. Let me tell you what he has done for me. There's a cause. If you can't see the cause, then maybe you need to just read your Bible more, have a little, so that you can gain some faith. Because according to the Bible, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. But until we stand up and not just be mediocre Christians, um, you know, the world cannot see the shining light within us, okay? It is a wonderful light. It is an amazing light. It is an amazing life when you live through Christ. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. And David, who's anointed by God, who kills this giant, y'all, God helped him kill the giant because the giant fell face forward. And, and David had a slingshot and popped him in the head. More than likely, he popped him in the front. Why would Goliath not be facing him? And God probably hit him in the back of the head. And he laid down flat. God, when God is in it, you can win it. Okay? So, y'all keep that in mind that don't be embarrassed. And don't be um, comfortable and lukewarm, as God calls it in his word. When it comes to the Bible and Christ, know that there is a cause. Know that there is a heaven that he's prepared for us. And know that there is a hell for those who do not accept him as their savior. The only way that hell becomes real, well, it is real, but the only way that anyone goes to hell is not has nothing to do with who they are what they've done, where they're at, where they're from, what they look like on the outside or the inside. It has to do with their heart and whether or not they've rejected Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That is it. You can't gain salvation by doing something, and you can't lose it by doing something. Okay? Because we're not able to do it anyway. It's God's grace that gives us salvation. So it is important for us as Christians 
to stand. It's important for us as Christians to look at someone and share a testimony. I talked to my brother yesterday, and he said that God had been after him for three weeks to go to his congregation and say, I'm going to open up the church, and I'm going to let y'all share your testimonies. He said, and I mean, I've kind of fought it for a while because you just don't ever know what somebody's going to say, but God wants me to do it, so I'm going to do it. So last night, he said he was going to open up the church for testimonies. And I called him after church, and I said, how did it go? He said it went wonderfully. And he had, uh, he said he had several people give their testimony, and then several, uh, quite a few people get up and praise the Lord and give him glory in their life. And it, it wound up going about an hour. Um, more than anything, you can win somebody's heart to Christ through your testimony. I haven't given y'all my testimony necessarily, but it is important that we know our testimony, that we know what has happened, what happened to make us become born again. For one, it's important that we know how to be born again. It's important that we know how to tell somebody what being born again means, and it's important that we be able to tell somebody about our testimony and how Christ delivered us from sin and how he has blessed our lives since then. Now, it doesn't mean that our lives are always perfect and that we don't go through things, and it doesn't even mean that he puts us through things on purpose because we've been bad. Sometimes he puts us on through things because he puts David through quite a few things. Um, Sometimes he puts us through things just to teach us stuff or just to be closer to him. Or, um, I mean, you know, it's not just because we're naughty. There's so many people out there that think that if people go through bad things, they've done something bad and God's punishing them. And that is true in some cases, but not every case. So y'all need to share your testimony. You need to be bold. You need to understand there is a cause, and you need to believe in your heart that God is supernatural. God is God, and he can do anything so that you're not scared to be bold. David wasn't scared. He was a tiny little tot. Well, not a tot, but you know what I'm saying. He was a young man. Saul put his armor on him, and and he said, look, I can't wear this armor. I haven't even, I haven't even worked hard for it or anything you take it back and he took the armor off he went out there with his slingshot and he killed that giant now we can win people over to christ if we have the courage it is up to us to believe to have the faith that we need to have the courage to know that we can do it okay so let's stand up for god it is amazing when you think about how God used David. What a story. Why didn't God use the oldest son? Because it would have been a story, but not as good of a story. Because God showed us that he could take an ordinary young man and do something extraordinary. He can take you, an ordinary woman or man, an ordinary that woman that may just not even get out of the house and sits at home. He can do extraordinary things with us if we let him, if we have what it takes, if we have what David had. And that was knowing our hearts that there is a cause for Christ. There is a cause, y'all. He is so good. He is an amazing God. And he blesses us beyond measure so let's do it let's stand up and let's be bold don't be afraid to ask somebody if they're saved in your family don't care if they think you're a holy roller or not what matters is are they going to heaven are you going to see them one day it doesn't matter that they think they've been saved since they were young in church some people think they're saved because they go to church or their granddaddy went to church or because they've been baptized People, a lot of people don't even know what salvation is. Some people go to church every Sunday, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, and they still don't know what salvation really is, and they couldn't share the good news uh, because they just don't. For one, they don't see the cause. For another, they don't, they're not learned. 
So let's get in our Bibles and read, and let's continue this Bible study. We, me and Chris will meet with you again Friday, and see you again with Bible study. I hope y'all have a blessed Monday. Um, you know, a lot of us, Lena says, greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. That is true. And so many of us know scripture like that. Listen to me. We know it. We can repeat it. But do we do anything with it? Do we testify? Do we share? Because going to church or inviting somebody to church is not, is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about stepping out and being bold, okay? Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. We're going to say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross so that our sins could be forgiven. It is his blood that covers us, his blood only that saves us from the sinful world that we live in. May you be with each and every one of us who take the time out of our day to read your word, or to come on here and watch a Bible study. May, may you show us and give us the courage that we need, courage like you gave to David, so that we can be used and be a vessel for you and bring others to you, to you, to you and to salvation. May we not be ashamed. May we, may we not be afraid. May we not care what others think about who we are, because only you, God, know our heart. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. It's so good to see ya. And I have no idea what I'm cooking today. Um, me and Chris were so busy over the weekend. I worked on the cookbook that I don't even have my menu. I'm probably going to pull a menu from two weeks ago, and we're going to just use it over. Okay. Probably my first menu. So we've got to go to the grocery store. We didn't even to the grocery store. But uh, we'll get up and eat some cereal or some or grits or something, and then uh, I will catch y'all later. And uh, thanks for loving the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for loving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and for listening this morning. I really appreciate it. Bye, y'all.